1977, Thelma Houston's anthem, Don't Leave Me This Way, took the disco world by storm. Soon after its release, it was a nightclub favorite and holding steady at number one on the charts. Everybody has that don't leave me this way feeling at, at least a few times in their life and there's no other song that just sounds so desperate and so soulful. But Thelma was no overnight success. Growing up in Mississippi, she sang in every church choir she could find. I was Methodist, I was Baptist, I was Church of God in Christ. Whoever would let me sing in the choir and let me sing adult songs. When Thelma was 10, her family moved to California, but her first big break didn't come until years later when legendary producer Jimmy Webb signed on for her critically acclaimed debut, Sunshower. The exposure helped Thelma get a Motown recording contract, but she still couldn't get a hit record. That would all change when Thelma met Motown executive Suzanne DePass. Don't leave me this way. Suzanne found Don't Leave Me This Way on a Harold Don't Melvin and the Blue Notes album. And you know, she said, I want you to listen to this album, Thelma, because I think this is, this is a hit. Don't leave me this way. And you know, I listened to it and I thought, well, it's a good song. Seeing her number one Grammy Award winning hit from 1977, the great oh, Thelma Houston. Leave me this way. Putting a disco twist on what had been an R&B song, Thelma recorded the tune, much to the chagrin of Mr. Motown himself, President Barry Gordy. He saw me as more of a Dinah Washington, but I think Suzanne recognized what was going on musically in terms of the disco market. When Don't Leave Me This Way was released in 1977, disco was in its heyday and Thelma became one of its foremost divas. Before long, Don't Leave Me This Way was number one on the Billboard charts and won Thelma a Grammy Award for Best R&B Performance. Thelma's singing career continued and she went on to record over 10 more albums. Baby. 